Um, it was um, a wacky, far out idea that I had that I would like to do a show that would be a play and it would be me working on stage, doing my writing work, and as the audience worked on their work in the audience, and then after the timer went off, I would sit with them and talk about their work, whatever that work might be, and offer them encouragement and guidance and cheerleading and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and that was 11 years ago. We started in the lobby of the public theater. I've been doing it all over the world, mostly in the lobby of the public theater. The public theater, thank you. HowlRound came out a few years ago to help facilitate the streaming of it. And uh, now HowlRound is creating this beautiful mosaic that is all of us. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And here we are. It's Thursday. What we're going to do is we're going to work together for 20 minutes, as we always have, because there's something magical about <laughs> 20 minutes. And then we're going to, that's the action of the play. And then we're going to do the dialogue of the play, which is going to be you asking me questions about your work and your creative process. It's all about you. And Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Should you have a question, go Audrey. Thanks, SLP. If you do have a question and you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant button, uh, <laughs> likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top of your on an iPad. There's a raise your hand button in the participant tab that you should click on. Um, and if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can actually ask us questions via social media. Um, uh, you can tweet at us at, at @WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can tweet at the Public Theater's Twitter, which is at Public Theater NY or right to the Public Theater's Instagram. And those are the ways. Those are the ways. These are the days. Now is the time. That was a rhyme. Okay. Here we go.
All right. That was 20 minutes. Hope you got some work done. I got some work done. Um, minutes. Yeah. So um, now's the time when... Uh, I can't hear you, SLP. Uh -oh. I'm not sure. Uh, I am unmuted. You, you seem to be unmuted. I am. Yeah. Can you... Uh... You can... It's just me. Oh. It's just me. Oh. What a oh. dingbat. Thanks, everybody. Not a dingbat at all. You're a hardworking <laughs> woman, girl. We know who you are. We have a question. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to write out all my answers and put them on my notebook. I was like, hey, that's going to be tricky. Or type them in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Who's got a... We've got Laura. All right, Laura. How you doing, girl? Are you there? You got to unmute. Laura, you... Laura needs to be unmuted. I'm clicking. Are you there, Laura? Oh. oh. It looks okay. like she's... Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. I just want to tell you thank you for telling me to watch um, Dave Chappelle. Oh. That wasn't so funny, and it was. So maybe I won't be so funny when I do my set. But also, go. I just want to say thank you for creating this, this like community. I mean, everybody is just so warm and really open. And even Kim that comes here called, you know, we spoke and she books, com you know, comedians at the West Coast. So we had a really long talk. Yeah. So this is also a great networking thing, you know. So yeah. thank you so much. It's really great. You're pulling us through this time. So thank you. That's uh, it. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. And Jimmy would love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Um, all right, Gavin, you're up next. Are you there? I'm having a struggle with the clicking today. Here we go. Oh. Are you? Gary also, oh no, he's moving. No, he's, it looks muted. Yeah, I'm clicking on it. And oh. it's asked on you. Gavian. There you are. He's oh, there in. we go. I'm sorry, I'm a computer idiot. It took me forever to get on this thing. I'm trying to do this for the whole past week. So Good to see you. Very well. I've been trying to talk to you for a while. Thank you for this format, first of all. It's wonderful. I love the dialogue you guys create and the openness and the fact that I, you are not afraid to step on people's toes. But you're able to <laughs> challenge ideas and not be unapologetic about it. Um, I wrote my question out and I've written 28 plays so far. Wow. Wow. And Great. all my plays deal with social issues uh, like women and rape. I'm working on one about domestic violence. And I'm trying to walk through shoes, and I'm best way to illustrate. I am intellectually passionate about what I'm saying, but I'm unapologetic, unapologetic what I say. I raise questions on all sides of the fence, whether you're white, black, Spanish, homosexual, whatever it is. I'm raising questions on what do we do, what do we create in this what I call social mythology <laughs> that is created in our brain when we see people of different creeds, religions, race, whatever it is. And with the murder of George George Floyd. It really sparked the play I've been trying to work on for the past 10 years because something occurred with my son on a bus and I raised, oh. was raising questions about the black community, the black American community and society and the media and the art and what I call the angry black American mentality, this monster that they feed into that we all see but it's not of our own creation but rather it is a festering uh, of all our concepts put together in our expectations or lack of expectations of upon other people of different race, creeds, and religion. So I'm trying to understand what it means to be a black American and a white guy writing this play, raising these questions. So I wrote it down so I can actually ask you about the ideas and how to approach it. My plays are sparked when I see or hear something that, that makes it makes me itch the back of my brain. But the murder of George Floyd is part of an old play that I've been trying to write for 10 years. This social, myth this social mythology that depicts black Americans in the mind's, eye of the mind's eye of society. Black American culture, the media, and Hollywood that creates this, this us and them mindset, dividing and conquering people by making us think that we're different when we're, already, when we're 
when we are all all real pardon me when we are all really really simply and but complexly human but how would you go about trying to understand a point of view such as a guy trying to write from a woman's point of view or a white guy trying to understand what it means to be black in America or a guy trying to understand a woman who's been mentally and physically abused but still accept but still affects their circumstances as such as a thing that is making that that is their own making, believing that she has no other has nowhere else to go. Knowing that you're as a playwright who has not yet experienced the trauma, but you see and hear what makes you angry and appalled, you know you can't really know or understand. You as a playwright, you want to as, as you as a player, you want you want to, and you're simply trying to mentally walk a mile in another person's shoes. To know to understand you see the injustice and self victimization process occurs within and without the system and you don't you dare and you my tablet almost went on and then you want to speak speak out against it to bring it to to a fresh and raw to in the minds and hearts of the audience so they may as individuals as individuals and in collective conscious can consider these thoughts and questions that you raise in the play it's the playwright looking in in trying to look out and still keep the goldfish bowl world reality painted on the world stage for the theater as he or she brings the play to alive. Where how can the stranger play the stranger playwright come to better to understand come to a better understanding as so she can write from an honest and heartful play that makes the audience consider the unthinkable truth that that they've allowed to themselves to become numb to and still may, remain objective in the process without allowing his or her social prejudice of accepted truths of social labeling to skew the idea and question the play to his or her own thought of what the play should or should not be. Mm-hmm. I tried to put that on Twitter and it was not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Gabrielle. Well, it's a, such a beautiful question. I mean, how do we as writers or specifically as playwrights or dramatists walk uh, a mile in other folks' shoes, you know? Um, how do we sort of embrace and, and also help untangle uh, some of the difficulties and, and, uh, of our society, you know, the, the, the issues of our society, but specifically, as you said, by walking around, by walking a mile in someone else's shoes. Um, it's, it is a great, it, 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 is one of the hardest things about dramatic writing. Um, it's one of the things that um, s- sometimes I find myself doing when I find myself writing characters who are not on the surface me. It's something I've been working on uh, as long as I've been a writer. So we're in you know, four years, I've been working on this craft. It's a craft thing. And it really, I, for me, as I understand it, and I'm sure you've tried it, you've written many, many plays, uh, and, and works of literature, and we have to, as much as we can, uh, forget ourselves. I, um, so that I am writing from the big S of self and not the little S. And it's a, it's a skill thing. It's, it's a craft thing. It's an art form. It's much less, in my opinion, about what I've got to say, what I've got to say. Well, see where my challenge runs in this is the fact is when I'm writing this play and I'm I get shut down because I'm raising issues with the black American culture that helps propagate what I call the angry black American. Like when they say I uh, the N word they said, Well we're just owning it so I said, What exactly are you owning? And I'm raising questions that I get shut down automatically on that. Because Well, I, I mean y- y- sure, sure. Well if you I mean the N words, it's whole, it's a whole big conversation. But the short answer to that, my brothers and sisters say, if it can't cancel you, you can't use it. So you know, it, it, I mean, I, I mean, I think I, I think I said that correctly. Like, if it can cancel me, then I can use it. Meaning, it's mine. Um, for someone else to just use it as, yeah, well, you use it, so why can't I? Uh, that is a misunderstanding of the complexity of the situation. 
basically. So that's a short answer to that. Yeah. Um, it's a long right. conversation, but the short answer yeah. is, is that, that we have to understand what's going on in, in the world, um, you know, to, to, to have that conversation more effectively. But, um, but the point is, is that I think that what we, if you write as a writer from your perspective, instead of trying to tell, uh, you use the word them and they and this other culture, instead of telling the other culture what they should and should not be doing, I think you'll be able to sit more in your shoes because I'd like you to be walking around in your shoes okay. more as a writer. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to walk around in, for example, mine. Well, I, you know? I, did, I did send you some things on Facebook. So, I mean, I don't know if you got it or not. But I I'm not on Facebook. Um, I have people who are on Facebook for me, just so you know. Uh, I don't, I don't, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a, you know, I got a, I've got a packed day. So yeah. we, try to, we try to, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted yeah. to play the white noise because the, 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 the conversation was, was what I got to just is actually addressing some, some of the issues I'm trying to address. So, I mean, that's why I was trying to say, get your, your feedback on that and see what you thought and yeah. I'm just trying yeah. to get someone else's point of view. I hear you. I totally hear you. Yeah. Okay. Who else we got? Thanks, Gavin. Um, all right, we're gonna go to Russell. Are you there, Russell? Yeah, hi. Uh, hey. okay. Uh let's do it. Uh <laughs> 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 oh man. Uh well, I, I'm also starting a new play. Uh, I kind of, I know what I want to say. I know kind of where I want to go with it, um, but I don't really know plot. So I was looking for uh, your opinion because I've asked other playwrights too. Uh, do you find it's more valuable to like beat out every beat of mm -hmm. a story before you actually sit down and like bang out the dialogue or do you just kind of like free flow? Right, right. Well, wh which would you prefer? I've tried both ways. Okay. And uh, the favorite piece I have ever done, what I did was I didn't like plot out like different plot points. Mm -hmm. uh, I figured out a mechanism through which to uh, tell, to like tell time through the story because I didn't want to have any blackouts in it. Um, so once I got like that mechanism down, I just kind of like wrote the scenes into chunks and just kind of uh, heightened each character uh -huh. experience from there. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that's the best work I've ever done. So it was kind of a combination of both. Sure. Okay. Then I mean, I I always think if it if it works for you and you enjoy it, then try it again. Do you know what I mean? Once it stops working for you, then you can look to other options. But there's no rule. Um, you know, I was I don't know who I was talking to. All all streams lead to the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a million ways to the finish line. Um, so if you found a way that works for you, I would say. Keep working it, brother. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Thank okay. you. Sure. Thank you. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Laura. Laura, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for doing this wonderful um, piece writing uh, in unison experience. It's just fantastic. I just wanted to thank you, first of all, for, for doing this. Um, my question is, I, I'm not writing a play right now. Um, I am actually working on a memoir, and it's coming along. I've been working on it for a long time. Um, I'm not at the point yet where I'm going to write a query letter and send it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can see that time coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering in your process, um, do you do you go to an editor? Do you go to a, a good friend to review the work? Because I, I mean, there are parts of it, you know, I've looked at parts of it so many times I have it practically memorized, so I may mm -hmm. miss things. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering what you do when mm -hmm. you get to that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a couple of different trusted readers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they're not, you know, professional readers, you know, they're just friends who mm -hmm. um, might have the time to uh, read a piece of the work or the entire work sometimes and give me feedback. They care more about me and, and uh, succeeding in the work than they do about me getting their ideas in the work. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just, I just uh, sort of check in with a couple of different friends. Maybe this week, one of them's available, you know, two weeks from now, another one might be available. So kind of farm it out a little bit Uh uh, and uh, go from there. And that's super, super helpful because you are getting the opinions of people who are smart, who have known you a long time, who would be the kind of folks who might want to read your work eventually, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. uh, And, uh, and they care about you. So that's the super helpful. Um, And then query letters, uh, I think are these days are more successful. They go through agents. I'm I'm not sure, but that's what I've heard. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, publishers are more apt to read stuff and, and look at stuff if it comes through a professional that they know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's just the, the uh, pro tip on that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah no, no. You could read it for you or would you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have some people who I would trust uh-huh. with uh-huh. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, it's not quite there yet, but uh-huh. I think it'll be there soon. Uh-huh. Um, I don't have an agent, but that'll be a whole, you know, that's the next step. So, uh-huh. Uh-huh. but it's thrilling though. It's really thrilling though. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I am excited. Uh-huh, Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Thank Laura. Um, all right, up next, we've got Vernita. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hi, hi Vernita, good to see you. Yes, hi, uh, Ms. Park, so nice to see you. Hi, Audrey, hi, everyone. Um, I am uh, logging in today, I have a question, and um, I think... One of the things I feel like I'm discovering more is that I really enjoy writing from um, these kind of hot, palpable, my phone, uh, experiences that I'm having Mm -hmm. and the feelings that I have around them. So, um, but this particular one I want to bring up because it is tying to the current climate that we're in. And mm-hmm. that outside of my aspirations around writing and really seeing writing as the bigger part of my vision and work, I'm, I'm also in, an independent event producer. And oh, as a yeah. consultant, um, I've been independent for about seven and a half years, going on eight. And I'm being confronted right now with myself these last couple of days. And to be honest, I actually missed Monday's session for watch me work because I was very consumed with just kind of the emotion of my own self-realization, my own kind of like the next wave that I'm feeling through this Black Lives Matter critical mass is that it's like how much I'm indoctrinated in this country, like how much I have been trained to respond and act and play the parts of like the part I'm supposed to play as a black woman in this country within the systemic racial constructs that have been created. And having been someone that didn't necessarily think of myself that way, or as a young professional Ivy League educated person that I would transcend these constructs. And it's like, no, no, I I haven't transcended them. Like they are fully operating in my life and there is a certain level of um, reckoning that I'm feeling with that right now. So as that spills over into my consulting work that I mentioned is mm-hmm. that I've started brainstorming a piece and I think it's an article, I think it's an open letter, but part of my experience has been that um, I get hired to be the lead, I get hired to be the executive producer by black organizations. Mm-hmm. And over the course of my career, when it comes to white organizations, I get hired to be a do a piece. You can do seating, you can be guest relations, Mm -hmm. but I've never been the executive producer of a major event for a white owned, white led organization. And I even have a very specific experience come to mind where I was personally recommended and I feel that I was passed over Mm -hmm. for um, Mm -hmm to be that executive producer for a team that's an all white team with the exception of one lone junior assistant who's you know the one black person on the on the floor 
and that I do feel I was I, I was passed over, mm -hmm. even if it was an unconscious bias by by the color of my skin. So I started writing this piece about my experience as being an event executive producer, and and this particular company and client has put out a statement of how they recognize they need to do better um, in terms of inclusion and equity. Um, I got feedback from one of my mentors that I really trust. And her response to me was like, you can't write that. This is a black woman. Um, you can't afford to write that. You can't afford to take the risk of putting yourself on the line of and, and losing business, which I feel like kind of like plays into the same said systematic construct that, I, that, that I'm speaking about. But I feel like this is if I'm going to speak about this, this is the time to do it. And if my question is, I, I heard part of um, a previous session this week, we talked about, you know, do you new, use synonym, uh, pseudonyms, um, not use the real name of the, of the company, but then I'm like, how do I move the needle forward if the persons I'm looking to be accountable aren't, you know, don't have to, you know, be accountable. Like they, they don't have to pay attention to this piece. They don't have to um, take ownership because they're not being pointed out. So any mm -hmm. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, this, is, this is great. Cause um, when I say watch me work and I wanna talk about you and your work in our, in our writing work, we might experience self-censorship. And the woman, Bernita, you were referencing, uh, I think it was yesterday or so, who talked about, should I use a pseudonym I think if I remember correctly, it was because her family was shunning her for telling the truth, you know, so that's, and now there's this other level of, in your work life, you are being uh, unfairly treated, discriminated against, or you, f you feel that you are, and I, I believe you. Um, and what, do you, what does one do about that? How do we have conversations about that that can move the needle forward when your mentor says, if you t start talking, you'll, you know, you're going to make it difficult to get jobs. If I'm re re repeating it correctly, I just want to make sure I'm repeating it correctly. Um, so there's a couple of things. Um, number one, the, 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 the feelings you were feeling about you know, I'm, I'm part of this mess too, you know, I, I thought that I, you know, had, were more liberated and I'm part of this mess too. Um, yeah, there's no way that anybody in this country cannot be part of this mess. Okay, mm -hmm. some of, uh, some folks, some of us end up with a knee on the neck and I can't breathe like dear George Floyd, right? Some of us have to do a reckoning, like what you're doing. Some of us are the perpetrators of this bullshit. Mm -hmm. But there's no way that any of us, any, there is no one in this country. Uh, uh, maybe a baby that was just born today, maybe, but then that baby, they got parents and the parents have ideas and the parents are gonna start, have started already teaching the child some things, right? There is no one in this country. We, none of us are free of this shit, right? Um, and, and talking about it is a great way to process it, Bernita. I think it's very brave of you to even admit that you might be turn, turning some of the wheel, helping a little bit somehow, somehow, how do I stop? Okay. So there's that. So just be awake to what you're doing. I would say that's a great way to start. And I think you've started doing that. And, and then the third thing, trying to enlighten a, uh, a, 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 a employer that they are doing some bullshit and you know it. In my experience, folks who, uh, number one, uh, I, it sounds like your employer, uh, well, how do you say this? Um, I try to do my job. I have, and, and not to get into it too much, I, I work in Hollywood and I work in American theater. I deal with shit like you're talking about all the time, 
all the time, every day. Today, I've been on Zoom since nine o'clock this morning. Since nine o'clock this morning, I've been dealing with shit you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. So how do I, you know, how do we do what I've decided over and over? I got to do my job and not so much instruct somebody else how to do theirs because I don't know if the folks you're talking about can be changed by your letter. I don't know. So we got to play hot, but we also got to play smart. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like if we were in the WNBA, you and me, we're on a team, right? I don't know much more about basketball than that. But you know what I'm saying? There we are moving down the court, right? And I pass and you, oh, you go and you dunk, right? Okay, you're playing hot, but now we're gonna play smart because we got the whole game to play. If we're running a marathon, right? Or if we're a relay race, you know, we got to play hot, use our energy, but also we got to play smart. So I don't know this, I don't know the specifics of your workplace and how that all works, but I would just say, try to employ both. Try okay. to employ both. Okay. And I, um, <clears throat> and I realize now as I'm speaking of it, part two to this is there's my personal experience, mm -hmm. but then my other I mean, I guess I, I, I feel like I would be a chump not to express something because this is also a magazine outlet that has done a really good job of presenting itself as diverse and inclusive because there are people of color on their covers. There are, you know, black doing well at the, uh, in participating in their events, which is, you know, what I'm you know, mm -hmm. being brought into, but then it's like the entire team behind the outlet. Right. There's no diversity at all. So like, okay, so you put a person of color on your covers, but you're not investing in the team behind the work. And so um, that's the other piece where I feel. Okay, I hear you. I, and I, Vernita, I've been in those situations too. I would just say play hot and play smart. And play smart. This is this takes another level of intelligence, and you have that intelligence because the goal is to be given a seat at the table and be given a meal at the table, not just to be thrown a bone or get your anger off your chest, mm -hmm. right? Keep the goal in mind. Eyes on the prize. That's another one of our mantras, right? Eyes on the prize. So. Uh, I'm not saying don't write the letter. I'm not saying write the letter. I'm just saying you know more about the situation. And with your mentor, I'm glad you have a mentor who can give you some guidance. Okay. And keep coming back here and keep writing your articles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bernita. Good to see you. All right. We've got about nine minutes left, and we're going to go to Emery. Emery. Hi. Can you hear me? Hey, Emery. Yes. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so I have a question kind of about being in, well, not kind of, it's about being an early playwright, early career playwright in like these times, um, kind of before COVID mm -hmm. happened, um, uh, you know, I feel like there's like, there is like a big emphasis when you're an early career playwright on like getting produced either by other people or like self-producing. Um, and I was lucky that I got to do some of those things before COVID hit and I felt like the gears were really turning and like, you know, the little, little moves were being made by me, which felt really good and was Great. really exciting. When all this came crashing down, obviously ev the world ended for everyone. Like, I mean, not, not fully, but like, you know, everyone had dreams that they like, you know, couldn't achieve because of it. So I feel like that's not unique to me at all, but I guess I'm just wondering like, as an early career playwright, like how, like what, 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 like what do you think is um, like the role of the early career playwright in like a post COVID world? And like, what can they do to keep mm -hmm. the gears turning and keep moving in the direction mm -hmm. going? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great question, Emery. Um, and because we're not in a post COVID world yet, I don't, I don't exactly know. Um, and I left my crystal ball at home. No, I. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I, I do think that, again, like I was telling Vernita, do your job. So what's your job, Emory? If your job is to write, okay? If your job is to continue to try to make connections, as many connections as you can, you know, like, I mean, have Zoom calls, maybe schedule Zoom readings, 
uh, network with folks that you want to meet or can. Do you see what I mean? Um, yeah. Do everything you can and let the things you can't do anything about, you know, run their course. Because you, unless you have a, you know, a hot tip on a great vaccine, you know what I'm saying? But um, if you don't, what <laughs> can you do? You know, you yeah. can keep writing. You can keep doing workshops of, of your plays. You can write some plays that are fun on Zoom, you know? Keep writing though, I, I, I would say that's your job. And that's gonna be your job. Uh, obviously that was your job before COVID and that's gonna be your job after COVID. That's, that's your work, that is your work, okay? okay. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Emery. Um, all right, up next we're gonna go to Dahlia. Dahlia, are you there? Did Hi. I <laughs> Hi. Um, I just made myself ask a question because I'm kind of scared of the Zoom thing. Oh. Um, I have been really lucky. I, um, I've um, been a New York Foundation for the Arts Playwriting Fellow and the Disney okay. Fellowship and so much generosity in my first play was like it wrote itself through me. I didn't even want to be a writer. But I have this new play and it's called the Oh My God Particle Show. And I was actually sent over to CERN a few years ago in Switzerland to go inside the Large Hadron Collider. And I cooked up this crazy play about like our place in the universe. Is the universe responsive? It, um, it's to encourage girls to get into STEM careers and to disengage from romantic love and use our creativity. But I, I, this is ridiculous because I, I don't mean to toot my horn, but this is like, I went to Oxford. I was a scientist and I feel like how, who, who do I have the right to explain the universe? And are, I'm like short circuiting myself because I know most great, any plays that are about faith or huge topics, but I feel like this one and even the particle physicists I work with, they're like, most of them become suicidal because it's such a massive topic. But I'm having a hard time now to like get the personal, you know, and to wrestle with my own questions of the universe and where my place is, how we're all connected, how we use the energy without sounding like a woo-woo person. But I, I'm just, my last play, which was based on a, a event of actually when I got attacked in New York and that was easy, well, hard, but easy, but you know, so I'm just having, this is such a vague, vast topic. I'm struggling about I, I guess it's just the words or my place in the universe but I mean I guess that's a question of every playwright or writer or scientist grapples with but I'm having a hard time bringing it down to the personal from so I didn't know if there's some tricks to uh <laughs> just do it <laughs> well yeah um uh believe it or not every play is about the universe and every single thing in the universe is about the universe and trusting so, we all have the universe in us it's right and it's just writing it and performing it through right. us but what i'm saying is that writing a play about the universe is no different from staring at a rock because there is the universe in the rock there it's everywhere so, so what i'm saying is the way you're talking about it it's outside of myself do this with your hands, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> okay. what you're writing about is inside, connect yourself to character. You know, I mean, any play that you love, whether it's Fences or For Colored Girls or King Lear, it's about the universe and our place in the universe. That's, that's why we create what we do, um, regardless of the specificity of our issue. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement is about the universe everything is about the universe so chill <laughs> yeah and breath trust and, it's and and think about character think about character i'm guessing that in your play you have some characters am i right or am yes I okay <laughs> goody goody you have some Yay, okay. there's a few. You have some okay great great okay great <laughs> what do your characters want more than anything love and okay okay what does that look like to get it? What would that mean, love? You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. What does the character want more than anything? What's in their way? What's keeping them from getting what they want? 
How do they go for it? Show me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In the end, do they get it or not? Um, they did. Um. <laughs> but you see, I, you don't have to. You know, it's, these are not questions you have to answer yeah. right now. These are just questions that you have to ask yourself. You know. You know and I mean? think it also is. Um, it's so wonderful when you get grants, and this place already got. 14 amazing grants. And I think that also makes you like a deer in headlight, right? Because you're like, I have to teach about the universe and just do the very specific work. I would say it makes you like a deer in headlights. Oh, most people be like me. <laughs> deer in headlights. <laughs> uh, just like... to clarify, right. I, that's what I'm saying. We, we mm -hmm. as writers, you're, writing, you're dealing with language and get specific, okay? So it seems like it's creating some anxiety in you, you know? Again, take a breath. Do you have a meditation practice? Uh, all the time, I know better. <laughs> Is that a yes? Yes. Great, okay, how often do you meditate a day? Like twice a day. Great, great, okay, great. Do you have a yoga practice or a running, some kind I of- I walk, I do everything to get centered, but I maybe I'm doing too much of that too. I just need to- <laughs> No, do you sit, you have, and you have a daily writing practice, I'm guessing, right? That's a little bit hit and miss. That's why I need better, yeah. Ooh, okay, great. Okay, it's great to find something that's hit and miss. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a daily writing practice. You have a daily, daily med meditation practice, awesome. You've got a daily sort of exercise practice, fantastic. And now you're going to get serious about your daily writing practice. Because believe it or not, and I know you know this, that's the only way it's gonna get written. Play a, as brilliant as you are and as brilliant as it is, it's not gonna write itself. No. So it's gonna take you sitting down probably at your desk, most probably, and putting some time in every day right? How much time is 20 minutes too much time? How, how long do you meditate every day, twice a day? How many, like how many? 20 minutes. Great. I... So 20 minutes, 20 minutes is good. 20 minutes in the morning after you meditate. Can you spend 20 minutes writing? Yeah. Cause there's already a first draft. I think I'm just scared that it, it like has to go out in the world now. That's why. Guess what? It never has to go out into the world. Really. Oh, that, oh that's good. <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't. Even if it's a commission, it never has to go out into the world. I know plenty of writers who are commissioned and they never turn in their work. So it never has to go out into the world. It's going to go out into the world when you're ready. Oh, and okay. hopefully you will, you will be strong enough to do the work necessary to do the rewriting work necessary. So we're trying. So what you're going to do is you're going to get serious about your writing practice and you're going to spend 20 minutes. Can you do th 20 minutes three times a day? No, yes. Okay, in separate segments, because you have meditation twice a day, you can do <laughs> 20 minutes three times a day, right? Or even four times a day if you feel like it. And you're going to do your rewrite of your play if there's already a first draft. Fantastic. Think about characters. Ground yourself in characters. Okay. Be as specific as possible with your characters. What do they want? What are they doing? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So good. Uh, thank you. Great question. Thank okay. you. It's 6.02. Ah, who knew? I did. I was who watching knows? the clock. That's my job. But um, so um, it's, uh, the, this session is over, as we all know. Tomorrow we will release um, the signups for next week's sessions, Monday to Thursday. And those go up on the site, I think, around 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Um, they'll be up on the Public Theater's website for you to sign up for all of our sessions next week. All right. All right. All right. Everybody have a great SLP. Weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.